All right, let's now do another problem. Simple harmonic oscillation of a physical pendulum. I have here a rod, mass m, length l, rotating here, about an axis perpendicular to the blackboard, without friction. Here is the center of the rod, and let this angle be theta. There is a torque relative to point P. There is also a force that goes through point P. I'm not even interested in that force. I know there is here mg. Since I'm going to take the torque relative to point P, I don't worry about the force. But there has to be a force through point P. Otherwise, this ruler would be accelerated down with acceleration g, if this is the only force there were. But we know that's not the case, it's going to swing. So there has to be a force to P, I don't want to know what it is, but there has to be one. So the torque relative to point P, the magnitude, is the position vector R of P from here to here, cross with this force, and so that makes it one-half L times mg times the sine of the angle, and that's the angle is theta, so that is times the sine of theta. The cross product has the sine of the angle in it. So this is the torque relative to point P, which also must be the moment of inertia about point P times alpha, no different from what we just had with the pulley. So alpha equals omega dot is also theta double dot. This omega is the angular velocity, it's d theta dt, and the derivative gives me the angular acceleration. There has to be a minus sign here, that's important, because the torque is restoring. The same situation we had when we had a spring, we were oscillating a spring, the spring force is minus kx. The minus sign here plays exactly the same role. So I can write down here minus i of p theta double dot. Now if we take a small angle approximation, small angle approximation, then the sine of theta is approximately theta if theta is in radians. And so I can replace now the sine of theta here by theta, and so now I find if I bring this to the other side, I get theta double dot plus one-half L M G divided by the moment of inertia about point P times theta equals zero. Needless to say that I'm happy like a clam at high tide because I see here an equation which clearly tells me that we have a simple harmonic oscillation. Theta double dot plus a constant times theta is zero. And so we must get as a solution that theta must be some maximum angle times the cosine of omega t plus or minus phi. This omega has nothing to do with that omega. This is the angular frequency. This is related to the period t of the oscillation, which is two pi divided by omega. This is a constant. This omega is not a constant. It is unfortunate in physics that we use the same symbol. The angular velocity is zero when the object stands still, is a maximum when the object is here. That omega is always the same. It's related to how long it takes to make one oscillation. Both are called omega, both are radians per second. Couldn't be more confusing. All right, if we find I of P, then we can solve for the frequency, angular frequency, and we can solve for the period. So let's do the, calculate the moment of inertia about point P. In order to do that, we have to apply the parallel axis theorem, because you will probably be given the moment of inertia 
for rotation about the axis through the center of mass, parallel to this axis, and then you will have to add the mass times the distance between these two axes squared to apply the parallel axis theorem. So this is the moment of inertia about the center of mass, plus m times the distance squared, and the distance between these two axes is one-half L, so this is one-quarter L squared. I look up in a table what the moment of inertia is for rotation of a rod about its center. Perpendicular rod is perpendicular to the axis, and that is one-twelfth m L squared plus one-quarter m L squared gives me one-third m L squared. So I know now what I of p is, and so now I can solve for the value for omega, the angular frequency. I'll do that here so that we keep everything on one blackboard. So this term here, which is omega squared, omega squared equals one-half L M G divided by one-third M L squared. I lose one L, I lose one M, very common, always lose your M's in gravity, and so this is three-halves G divided by L. And so the period of one oscillation is two pi divided by omega, omega is the square root of this, so that becomes the square root of two-thirds L over G. And that is the period of the oscillation of this ruler. We worked on something similar in lectures, and we even measured the period, and we found very, very good agreement with the theoretical prediction. You could ask now, what is the kinetic energy of rotation of this rod, which changes with time? Kinetic energy of rotation is one-half I omega squared. Remember, the linear kinetic energy is one-half m v squared, the m becomes i when you go to rotation, and v becomes omega. So the kinetic energy of rotation equals one-half i omega squared. This is i about that point p. You know what theta is as a function of time? So omega equals d theta dt. So you can find what omega is. You know what i of p is, we just calculated it, and so you know what the kinetic energy of rotation is at any moment in time. It will change. It will be zero when this comes to a halt, and it will be a maximum when it is here. It's a continuous conversion from gravitational potential energy, which is a maximum here, to kinetic energy, which is a maximum here. And so this will obviously change with time, the kinetic energy of rotation. 